O sinner, come me. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Hello and welcome to worship. My name is Jason Anderson, pastor of Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church in Oak Lawn, Illinois. Earlier this year, we took a deep dive into the book of Romans as the famous Apostle Paul proclaims God's boundless mercy from a world away to our physically distanced world today. I hope you have grown in your love for Christ and enjoyed this series. Today is the conclusion, but it's also an invitation. Freed from judgment, we are invited to be ourselves, to gather our spirits together in worship, now and always in the name of Christ. Amen. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are, for it is ours, come as you are. Sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All of our broken, lift up your Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. We fall so short of God's holiness. By God's law, we stand accused of wrongdoing, and we're guilty. Forgive us our selfishness, our childishness, our fears and our anger, our hurtful behaviors. Forgive us the sin we know and the sin we don't know. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits who forgives you all your sins and heals all your desires, who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You make known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. Amen. The reading this week is from Romans chapter 14. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. 
let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord, and those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Here is the reading. Good morning, friends, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with Kara. Today's story is called Horrible Bear. Snap! A girl peeked into Bear's cave. She reached, but he rolled. Crunch! Horrible Bear! The girl shouted. The girl stomped down the mountain. Horrible bear. She stomped through the meadow. Horrible bear. She stomped all the way home. Horrible bear. Bear was indignant. I'm not horrible, he said. She barged in. She made a ruckus. She woke me up. How would she like it if... Bear got an idea. It was a horrible bear idea. Bear practiced barging. He practiced making a ruckus. He practiced waking someone up. Bat squeaked, horrible bear. Perfect, Bear said. Bear stomped out of his cave. The girl stomped into her room. But she was too upset to nap. So the girl tried drawing, horrible bear. She tried reading. Horrible bears! She tried talking to the best listener she knew. That horrible bear! He broke my... Rip! Suddenly, her stuffy couldn't listen as well as before. Oh, I didn't mean to, the girl cried. Oh. Meanwhile, bear stomped down the mountain. Roar, roar, roar! He stomped through the meadow. Roar, roar, roar! He stomped straight to the girl's front door. Roar! Which opened. I'm sorry, the girl said. And all the horrible went right out of the bear. Bear patted. He wiped. He got another idea. It was a sweet bear idea. Thank you, bear, the girl whispered. She had a sweet bear idea, too. Bear and the girl skipped through the meadow. They bounced up the mountain. And together, they patched everything up, even the kite. Nothing was horrible at all. For the moment, munch, munch, munch. The end. You know, I love reading so much. It helps me imagine different situations and helps me put myself in other people's shoes. I believe that reading actually makes me more kind and compassionate. And today's story teaches us about forgiveness, which can be really hard sometimes. But in today's Bible story, Jesus tells us how important forgiveness is. He actually tells us that we should forgive people 70 times 7 times which if you know your multiplication tables, that's a lot of times. We have to own up to our mistakes and ask people for forgiveness. And we have to offer that forgiveness to others when they hurt us. Just like we saw in today's story with the bear and the girl. When we realize that we are no better than anyone else, we can offer them forgiveness and mercy, the same kind that Jesus offers us. And forgiveness can be really, really difficult sometimes. 
so we definitely need Jesus to help us. Will you pray with me and we can ask for his help? Let's fold our hands, bow our heads, and you can repeat after me. Dear God, help us to love and forgive. Help us to love and forgive again. Help us to love and forgive over and over and over. Amen. Thanks for joining me for story time today. Have a wonderful week. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? In anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother and sister from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. People have a different way of doing things and different opinions on how it should be done. I once knew a guy who didn't like to beat around the bush, if you know what I mean. So he thought it was a brilliant strategy to be straightforward on a first date, to just ask those key questions, but you know, with gentleness in class. So he'd inquire about toothpaste procedures and toilet paper installation protocol. You might be surprised by the responses or the lack thereof, because I never got a second date. I mean, the guy, you know, uh, whatever. Eventually I clued in and refrained from asking those key kinds of questions. And look where that's gotten me now. A word of advice, don't gloss over premarital counseling. So what do you think? Are these deal breakers? Mm, I don't think so either. People just do things differently. We have opinions. Just like the people who went to the church in Rome. They had such big opinions that Paul had to write about it. All the eating and abstaining and honoring language refers to the, the trappings of rituals that flavor different cultures, values, and opinions at the time all very much alive and relevant in that ancient world. Do we eat the meat or not eat the meat? Do we celebrate a holiday or just ignore it? These days, obviously, we have much bigger concerns. Alb or no alb. O Lamb of God, I come, or come as you are. Air. Or electricity. Screen, hymnal, coffee, coffee. Our differences of opinion, are they really deal breakers? When I worked at camp, 
My coworker and I had to set things up to receive our staff for their week of staff training, which included all kinds of planning, like lessons and themes. And we had to design the environment that would best foster the kind of team that we were looking for, which included ideas and logistics. The director asked us to repaint one of the cabins used for crafts. And let me tell you, we were doing so well up until this point. We were given all kinds of paint, but we could not agree on a color. I wanted to actually use a few different colors. I wanted to make it a playful space that would inspire joyful work and creativity. My partner, well, my partner wanted to keep it simple. Otherwise it could just feel too distracting. And truly, I think he just wanted to paint the cabin so we could get on with our other responsibilities. Time was running short. Good point, I said. I'll go back to the director and tell her about our ideas and our conversations. I'll let her know that we haven't been able to land on a color, but maybe with some guidance regarding priorities and timeline, we can get this done right. She was happy to have this conversation with me and it led down the proverbial rabbit hole. We got onto topics like leadership and inspiring and attracting talent, personality types, diversity, self-differentiation and coaching. I, I love this stuff. And I really, really admired my boss. Well, after an hour or more, my partner showed up, covered in white paint, announcing how the project was already done. He just needed some help with the cleanup. I was furious. All of my careful, intentional work and preparation suddenly felt like, it felt like nothing. All of our ideas felt completely irrelevant and I felt betrayed by the person that I was supposed to work with. Someone who I knew loved this camp as much as I did. Also, I felt belittled. I felt unimportant. I felt set up and a little humiliated. I'm not too proud to admit my anger did not appease these feelings and neither did our boss. She despite my outrage, just laughed. Have you ever experienced something like this? Maybe in a grade school playground. I mean, I thought grown-ups would know better. Well, at least uh, my partner would know better. And that's, I think, what hurt so much. It really hurt. My boss, do you know why my boss just laughed? Because I had gotten so upset about something that was completely irrelevant. This project, turns out, had nothing to do with the paint job. This project was simply supposed to be a lesson in cooperation. It was about our relationship. It was about our ministry together. My boss was also quite happy to point out that this lesson in cooperation turned into a better, more valuable Christian lesson in forgiveness. We all make mistakes and therefore no one can judge. Not one of us can judge. Also, Paul offers no words of advice for these quarreling perspectives that were in his church. And I find actually great hope in his lack of direction. Do you know why? Because there is room in the church for all opinions. So stop competing, stop judging, stop claiming to know what's right and, and stop hurting each other. We are a family defined by love. And that is what Paul consistently points his church back to. But not our love, which falls prey to the self-gratifying ego. Nope. Paul points us back to a love that we can all have faith in. God's love, gracious love, amazing, forgiving, gracious love. A love that you know and that, that somehow you've experienced. Love that dies and rises again. Love that stops at nothing. Paul reminds his church to stand out, to stand out of the ego and stand united in the Holy Spirit. It's different people with different opinions, all equally mortal, all equal in Christ's immortality. What grace we are given to all have 
a place to feel welcome and needed and appreciated and free. Lay down your guilt, your sin, your fear. Lay down your anger or whatever it is that you cling to, whatever it is that prevents you or your free hands from reaching out to God who embraces us. God whose arms are open wide, open for you, for you to feel safe and connected to the mystery of life, connected to the mystery of the divine, connected to the power of God in community and filled with joy. Life is too short for grudges and too short to hold on to anger. May God bless you and fill you with joy. There is no judgment because we are all equally and simultaneously saints and sinners. So sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Did you just say and also with me? I love that. Thank you because I need God's peace too. Also, I think I need to do some forgiving. 
Maybe since we can't shake each other's hands right now, maybe instead what we could do is just pick up the phone and forgive. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith as we teach the love of Christ through Bible studies, Sunday schools, confirmation classes, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth, especially among our former and future preschool kids and families. Lord, in your mercy. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. We pray especially for our president, our governor, and our mayor. Lord, in your mercy. Bring truth and reconciliation wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when they are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Heal the sick and hurting. John, Barbara, Naomi, Anne, Mary, Therese, Doris, Jim, Linda, Bob, Thomas, Carl, Karen, Margie, Linda, Linda, Eleanor, Lord in your mercy. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. In your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Now receive the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.